She got up from primary school, other school, before her father returned from the preaching and repeated the church of Jesus. Where she completed her primary school education at Maywood Primary School in Multimeter Lagos. She passed a very competitive examination to Christopher in Lagos for secondary school education, but could not take the admission. Take up the admission as a result of the breakout of the Civil War in 1967. Her admission was never transferred to Queen's School Kenino from where she passed out in 1973 with a division one in the West African State Examination. She went to the Federal Government College in Ubu for the higher school certificate course and passed with physics, chemistry, and general paper in the HS examination in 1975. She proceeded to the class of Nigeria in Suka the same year to study both me and graduated with the second class of upper division in May in 1979. She had an international service at the University College of Science and Technology, now University University of Science and Technology in June 1980, after which she joined the Nigerian Institute for All Plan Research, Life of the Name, in August 1980. NIFO sponsored her for master's and PhD degree programs from 1981 to 1987 at the Department of Science and Technology at the University of Nigeria in Sudan. She got her master's in food science and technology in 1984 and her PhD in food science and technology in 1987 with specialization in food microbiology. Having joined NIFO in 1980, she rose to become a principal research officer in 1992. Her research in NIFO was on palm wine and deep fruit processing. In March 1992, she joined the services of the University of Agriculture now for that as lecturer one and rose to become Professor of Food Microbiology and Biotechnology in the year 2004. <laughs> she is a practical researcher. Indeed, her research work on online product, product development is, 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 I mean, resulted in this university, in the famous Funam and wine. This is very delightful. She has shown you that she has just decided interest in other areas, including beans utilization, cassava and cassava product shelf life, portability of commercial table water, microbial processing in food, in food environments, and capacity building. In biotechnology. She has contributed to over 40 publications in learning journals, in front proceedings, technical bulletins, and papers laid at conferences in our webinar field. Professor Silver Toshuku has supervised more than 200 undergraduate projects. Eight master's dissertations and three agencies. She has won various international fellowships to improve her knowledge, such as the American Society for Microbiology International Educator Fellowship in 2009 and the Safety Special Fellowship of the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, ICGA in 2010, as well as numerous international and national grants for capacity building in biotechnology. She was a member of the National Policy Committee from 2002 to 2010, and she's a member of various academic societies, 
including the Nigerian Society for Food Science and Technology, World Food Society of Nigeria, Nigerian Microbiology Society, American Society for Biotechnology, and the International Society for Biosafety Research. In addition to her contributions to research and teaching, she has rendered services to this university in various capacities, including the Senate, the Seminar Committee, and for so many years, between 2002 and 2009, she was the director of the Nava Technology Center. And during these years, she initiated and organized UNAM summer courses in practical biotechnology. I think that this will go out in our session. She has also served as acting director of the UNAM Human Maintenance and Biotechnology Center in 2001, Deputy Dean, College of Agricultural Management, Rural Development and Personal Studies between 1999 and 2000. And she has been the chairperson and also secretary of various committees in this university. And as I mentioned earlier on, she was the originator and the chief consultant for the University of Hawaii Water Factory. There is a new program in Africa called AWARD, A W E R D, African Women in Action Research and Development. And the purpose of this program is to mentor young women in the area of science and technology. Here, standing beside me today, is one of the mentors in this program. But our interest go beyond issues about academics. She is the chairperson of a human rights group, the Justice Development and Peace Commission of St. Anne's Catholic Parish, Abiyota. Professor Luzo Chuku is married to engineer Lejani Luzo Chuku of BZ Industries and the marriage is blessed with two children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure today to be standing beside a colleague, somebody with whom we come together in academics. Myself and the organizer of my interview for that position of the lecture are the same day. And we are going to talk the same day. <laughs> it is therefore my pleasure and honor to invite Professor Sylvia Veronica Ajaka Kuzushu from the Department of Food Science and Technology to present a unique inaugural lecture. Because this is unique because all of us present here today we have a lot to learn from her. And indeed, I'm looking forward to learn from you. She's a special in this series as she talks on about technology capacity in the gateway to food security. Thank you.
distinguished ladies and gentlemen, lambs and lionesses. Respectively, 
gave rise to modern biotechnology. And any reference to biotechnology these days usually refers to modern technology, biotechnology, unless it is otherwise indicated. Genetic engineering, which is the core of uh, biotechnology, modern biotechnology, is the manipulation of DNA to produce useful traits in living organisms. DNA is the blueprint of life. DNA is genetic information that provides instructions for the development and survival of all organisms. This is a DNA strand. It consists of a nitrogen base, sugar, and phosphate. The two strands are wound together to form a double helix, and the bases are the name A, Pyramid, T, Cytosine, C, and Guanine, G, constitutes the alphabet of DNA. So, for DNA, the building block of DNA is the uh, nucleic acids, and the nucleic acids are made of the benzene sugar, and phosphate group, and the nitrogen base. How is genetic engineering done? In the first place, the gene of interest is attached to a CTV vector for expression in a new cell, such as a plant cell, and the gene which is of DNA can be obtained by either cutting the donor DNA with the restriction enzyme, popping it out by the polymerase chain reaction PCR using the appropriate primer primers. The gene fragments are then mixed with the cut or linearized vector DNA and they recombine to form recombinant molecules. The recombinant molecules are transferred into bacterial cells where they multiply and the cells also multiply. At this point, the gene is said to have been cloned. The engineered or cloned gene is then transferred into cells of the desired plants or organism, and this is referred to as transformation. And a whole new plant or animal is regenerated from the cell containing the new gene using tissue culture techniques. Or this new cell is employed for a permanent protein for therapy, or it could be used for environmental radiation, or for basic research. Gene silence mediated by RNA interference does not insert any DNA into the cell, and wherever possible, is now becoming more and more the strategy of choice for molecular biologists. Now technology has changed the way science does things, and for this age, things can never be the same again. This illustrates what we are saying, that you have a variable which you normally store in the bacterial cells, and you have the gene you want to flow in the plant, animal, or bacterial cell, and you isolate this gene and by PCR, use it to make a new, a new plant that is uh, resistant probably to insects or herbicides. You can use the cells for bioremediation, like for cleaning up oil spills. You can use it for bio basic research, like sequencing it and manipulating the, the nucleotide theory. You can use it to make, uh, make growth proteins that will clear up your heart and make you more heart healthy so you don't have heart attacks and strokes. You can use it to uh, protein is a growth hormone to make somebody who has refused to grow to grow again. <laughs> food security, according to the World 1996 World Food Summit, exists when all people, everybody at all times, have physical access. If there is war where there is food, there is war where they grow beans, then there is no physical access, then there is no food security. If the person has to have economic access, if you don't have money, you cannot have food security, and the food has to be sufficient. If you are measure the food and ration it, then there is food insecurity, and the food has to be approved by NAFTA, it has to be safe, the food has to be nutritious, it has to have protein, carbohydrate, and all the lot, and it must be the dietary needs of the person, like the baby having enough milk, and it must also mean the food preferences of uh, the consumer. If I come from the east and you give me two instead of apple, I have not made that. 
So all these come together to give you an active and healthy life when all these are in bed and we say that there is food security. Africa and Asia accounts for 90% of all the nourished people in the world. So for Asia, this number has steadily reduced since the early 90s. But for Africa, especially Africa south of the Sahara, it is increasing. In fact, it has almost doubled. You can see here the red bar is the situation, the number of malnourished people in the 90s, and the ash bar is the number of malnourished people 2012 and up to now. You can see that the Asian countries have worked very hard and reduced or almost half their uh, number of the malnourished people, but in sub Saharan Africa it has almost doubled. Evidence shows that one of the more important reasons this is happening is that sub Saharan Africa is not spending enough on agricultural research and innovation, which is one of the most effective types of investments for sustaining the economic production and the production of food and security. Genetic engineering has been recognized as a necessary thing to for the success of any agricultural program and food security in the world today. An outstanding number of evidence generated in 29 countries around the world has shown that these countries should have grown genetically modified crops during the last more than uh, 16 years. Clearly, yeah, support that the uh, genetic engineering is important for the success of any agricultural program. You can see how the goal of the West, all of America and Canada, the South Americans, they all embrace the next and continue on with our crops. China, India, Malaysia, Philippines, all of New Zealand and Australia have embraced the next level of the buying crops. But here in Africa, only South Africa, Okinawa. Sudan and Egypt have embraced the next three modified foods. So the question is, what is happening to the giant of Africa? And why is Africa in general driving speed? Some 20, some 50 years ago, the Korean Revolution started in the West and immediately Asia and South America joined in. But Africa, with more than 50% of its population going to bed hungry, just watched. Today, Africa imports almost all of food from these people. Now, another more enduring revolution is on the Gini Revolution. The West started it, again Asia has joined them, South America has joined and they are all investing heavily in it. Again, Africa is dragging its feet. African heads of states are very reasonable, but biotech foods are an important part of the answer to food security, poverty, and innovation. But they are not invested in science, research, and development, or agricultural research and development. How can you say you accept and then you sit down and do nothing about it? We are not adopting the technology fast enough. Even Burkina Faso, the tiny country on top of Ghana there, has beaten us to it. It is encouraging that up to four countries from yeah, the delivered by Professor Sylvia Rizzo It was titled, Biotechnology Capacity Building, The Gateway to Food Security. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you for making our day. Thank you very much. God bless you again and again.